Okay, so it's a pleasure to have Paul Rees back uh, in the in the Good Morning Portugal studio. It's a Portugal club special. Uh, Paul is the co-founder, as you can see on the screen there, of Rural Properties. I'm just going to put him centre stage so we can have a chat about how you got to be in this position, Paul. Um, what's going on at the moment with um, rural property uh, here in Portugal and how people can get involved in that. We heard before we got started um, tonight that you have been here for over 20 years and you were familiar with Portugal even before that time. And you were, of course, the owner and the turnaround genius behind the Algarve Daily News as well, um, which went from print to online and still runs to this day. Um, and now you've you that you passed that on by the sound of it to move to more a more central location in Portugal. You moved away from the Algarve. So good evening. Thanks for being here tonight. Our Portugal club members may well chip in and ask you a few questions as well. Um, is that about right? That's that's a little pen portrait I just drew. Well, I don't know who writes this stuff, but it's, um, <laughs> it's outstanding. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Well, quite outstanding. Um, I can answer the questions you um, you so so cleverly wove into your introduction. Okay, um, all right. Quite, quite simply, uh, during my many years here, in seventeen of which was spent in the south in the Algarve, where my parents had moved in the eighties, um, I was always involved in one way or another in property. So I started out by learning as much as I could about the paperwork, then buying land and building buildings, moving into refurbishment of properties, firstly in the countryside and then in towns. And I moved to the central region near Pedroga Grande, which is equidistant between Lisbon and Porto, then east of it. Uh, in 2019, mainly because the property environment in the Algarve was becoming quite pressurised. And I worked out I was getting older, not younger. Don't know how that happened. Um, and each project was soaking up a huge amount of cash. So the, the cash risk, if you like, was getting um, to an uncomfortable level for me, for... Um, I'd say I'm a medium risk sort of sort of guy, Me medium to high. But as I've got older, it's more medium. So the central region, having done it, having spent only two weeks driving around it and talking to people and investigating property and prices and margins and what the market was all about and who was in it and who was who was arriving, who was leaving, showed from a purely business perspective that I could make better margins as a business in the central region and also from a personal point of view have a a change um, mm -hmm. need the the algarve my baseline for the algarve was in the 80s that's my black and white period and it, it changed beyond all recognition and continues to do so and it's it's become it becomes less portuguese each year um mm -hmm. And I kind of didn't like the expat lifestyle quite so much. You know, it just became too samey. So I needed a new challenge. So I moved to the centre region, set up a limited company, have shareholders um, who are a fine mixture of people. And how do I then fund buying properties, doing them up and selling them with individual investors? So not big banks, not not family offices, not large funds. It's people mostly that have moved to this country. I'd say half of them are people that have moved here that have surplus funds and are looking for an investment that they can um, take a bit of ownership of and have a bit of fun as well because they yeah. see their money going into a building. They see the, the work and the end result um, by video or in person. So it's a more rewarding for many i'm told than having an investment in the stock market or, or a i'm sure yeah because people who move here form an attachment don't they and have certain aspirations yeah. generally about yeah. the country and so it's a good fit from that point of view yeah it is it is and i have a one investor as an example um is american moved to porto 
uh, on a golden visa and has spare funds and yeah. he likes what we do um he's funding a significant development at the moment with a view when that's finished and we go through the figures of investing substantially more so he sees it as something he can um, engage in he's in his probably early 70s um and he said well without this you know he, you can go to portuguese lessons and go to the theater um he said but actually this is fun um, and so, so like a, a, kind of a hobby investment in a way yeah, yeah, it's, it's sort of more of a hobby because because there's money involved but um he enjoys he enjoys it enjoys the the marketing side the figures he's a figures guy he was in he was a a, a high up executive in a, in a well known computer firm let me put it that way okay. uh, interna international and just loves it you know that's okay. one of so it is yeah indiv individual investors with m projects of range from 40,000 to 180 terms of investment um so it's nothing huge the loss is controllable and the investor they can see their investment owns a property so they're not you know they don't it's not like a startup in the latest app where if it vanishes tomorrow <laughs> you know what have you got nothing so truly it's actually brick and mortar. yeah truly yeah, brick and mortar. Everyone, everyone understands everyone it's at some time if not currently live in a, a house of some sort and understand the buying the selling and the money you can make so so very relatable from that point of view so we're welcoming more portugal club members who might want to ask some questions as well good evening to you both um and yeah there's another aspect to it which I, i'm personally very excited by which is the regenerative um input or, or energy for central portugal and uh, I guess we've talked about this on the morning show, but it's a bit of a perfect storm, isn't it? There, there are people who want that to happen. And there are also people who are finding that the two big cities that you mentioned and you're halfway between them um, are becoming very expensive. So people are yeah. looking. It's, 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 it's money driven as well as aspirational or hobby driven or just something nice that people would like to see. So there's something really going on, isn't there, that's driving people for a number of reasons into central portugal you're you're ahead of the curve how, yeah. how, how can you give us an idea of of how that's changed or the the numbers or the, the amount of inquiries you get that reflect that at the moment I'd, I'd say it's approaching half and half now so half had in mind a rural lifestyle um in the beautiful central region they may have visited it they may have they certainly will have researched it and they are driven by lifestyle, a desire to be away from the crowd, yeah. um, yet with accessibility to airports, to beach, to, you know, to, to, to what people expect in this day and age. Um, that's probably half of people that are well planned. They've chosen the area because of its, its benefits. The, the other half, I'd say, are driven. They are people that have looked in the south. They've looked in Lisbon and Porto. They may have planned to have retired there. By the time it push came to shove, and they've got to actually realise some assets and put money into where they're going to live. They see the prices have uh, increased beyond recognition monthly, um, yeah. and go, "Ouch! You know, we can afford a, a two-bedroom apartment in Lisbon or a." four bedroom house on an acre of land with a pool in the central region so the, or something smaller than central region and leave a hundred thousand in the bank so it is yeah it's half and half and i think that that has changed uh, as prices have gone up elsewhere the there has been price inflation in rural areas it's it's patchy, but there's some areas where it's gone up significantly. But you're, you're talking about a, a low base. You know, it's it's not starting from a. <laughs> from, it's it's not got to eye watering at all, or even uncomfortable for many people that are coming to the country from other economies, other better paid economies, um, and they're delighted. They're getting more for their money, um, and a lifestyle that, if there are inconveniences, they're easily overcome by. Mm cost of living is lower um accessibility can be a, a challenge you just got to plan better yeah. but roads and hospitals and schools uh, you know 
exist. It's not the back of beyond. Oh, um, quite. Yeah. Just less populated. So, and a little bit of an educational process, of course, because a lot of foreigners don't know to look, do they? They don't know about this opportunity. But with the work you're doing, I think more and more are becoming aware of it. Do you think it's, I mean, presumably you you, you must think it's a trend that's going to continue. Do you? What are the threats to that? Um, and how do you see it sort of shaping up in the next five or ten years? Well, there's, there's always macroeconomic threats. Yeah. There's an election coming up. You know, the, if a party got in that, that somehow disrupted um, rural life. I, I can't see that happening. It's been government policy for decades to try and um, stop the flow of people from the countryside to the cities and to abroad. Yeah. Um, that continues. Um, the only thing that's propping that up is incoming foreigners, full stop, There's nothing else. Yeah. The, the kids are still getting well-educated and moving overseas. The old people are dying, leaving fam old family homes empty that are inherited and left or sold on to people like me. I, I haven't bought a single building with anyone in it. Um, yeah. Well, not to my knowledge. You know, I bought one with a dead cow in it, but that doesn't really count. Um, wow. Was that free or did you have to pay extra? I think well, it wasn't listed on the contents, put it that okay, way. Free gift. Okay, yeah. so, uh, and yeah, th th this is fascinating because you could argue that the countryside was disturbed long ago and we are not the threat to that. The foreigners are not the threat to that. And if anything, this is part, as I said before, of the regeneration Absolutely. of a, a beautiful resource in Europe. Um, so before we go to some questions, just want to quickly scroll through your team here. You mentioned shareholders. Am, am I right in thinking that the people who are the shareholders who are part of the company have been brought in because of their respective talents uh, that they bring to the project is that is that how you've made this team up the the shareholders that there are two sides you're scrolling through non-shareholders oh this the is moment. the team the team team rather than the shareholders. yeah it's a team, and it's a team of, right. of advisors um co-founder i see the contracts manager there the co-founder is a startup specialist yeah the guy you've got there is Richard Mills, it's known to many. He runs an estate agency in um, the Algarve, okay. but is a long-term friend. And his his knowledge of the legal system um, as it relates to property is exceptional. Um, Sue Englefield is really is social media. We've got advisors, Simon Perks, ex Santander, Totter, Portugal for over 20 years, really well connected. Yeah. Richard Lambeth, there also is a, a shareholder who's just increased his shareholding a couple of months ago. Amy, who, as we know, runs the um, Expacity, which is yep. mostly the American um, group for incoming Americans. And below that, uh, oh, Matthew and Thomas. Oh, I know those two guys. Yeah, great, great. Uh, yeah. Outstanding gentlemen who yes, know are. more about Portugal's architectural history than most architectural historians. Yes. Um, that they can walk into a building and tell me all about it. In yes. fact, they did that. I bought a 16th century house in Pedroga Grande that had been a hospital and a, a tavern. Um, and they walked in, told me where, where the original bits were, how it used to work. Um, they're exceptional. Quite they are, aren't they? And they've got a real passion for Portuguese property. And um, yeah, of yeah. course, Thomas is quite the Alan Rickman lookalike as well, and very, very British um, In, as well. Indeed, yes, incredibly uh, British. Right. Thank you for for uh, going through the team there. Any questions from the uh, Portugal clubbers tonight? Yeah, this pretty exclusively central Pedrogo Grand area, not anything. Uh, up here, like in the Minho region? Uh, I'd like to say not not yet, John. Um, when I started, we did some projects over in Castelo Branco, um, still central, but over to the east, um, and compared that environment to the west of the, of the central region. Um, I think there's a lifetime's work for me in the central region. The way the business would grow would be to shortcut a more organic expansion that would be geographic 
council area by council area um, by some sort of franchise arrangement. And I've been asked about that in two areas, with, um, one in the Alentejo and one in um, the Tomar area, where people actually completely understand um, what we're doing. And, and I'll look at that. I, I can't see, unless there's an, an injection of capital in the hundreds of millions, I can't see organically growing um, as far as where you are situated and as far as the Algarve border. It would need to be, there'd need to be a, a, a sensible business way of doing that and of controlling it. Because I think the skills I've learned here in the, in the central region, a lot of them are transportable, but the market knowledge side of it wouldn't be. You know, I, I couldn't just pick myself up, go to Evera and be the big I am. Um, I'd make mistake after mistake on buying properties that I'd either overpay or I'd, it, it, there's a skill to it. And yeah. you've got to learn pretty quickly because I'm dealing with other people's money. Um, so I am fairly forensic about uh, how that is, is spent. So the, the answer is no, there's nothing stopping somebody else doing exactly what I'm doing. Um, that they may lack the the bandwidth and the and the charm, quite frankly. But um, it would it's an open, it's an open field. I was asked yesterday actually. I bumped into an American investor in, in the road. I'd just seen on Facebook that morning, um, and he was working with a um, guy called Stephen White, who's just yeah. popped up. I think he's Canadian. Is he Canadian or American? Yes, he, he is Canadian. He's on the show in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. A really nice guy. I met him a few months ago, and he is doing sort of what I'm sort of what I'm doing in his wonderful way. He's a lot younger. He's very social media savvy, and he's getting investors and buying things. That's fine. And the guy yesterday said, "Well, aren't you in competition with him?" I said, "Absolutely not." I said, <laughs> "I said, please, it's a massive collaboration." And he yeah. said, "Well, what if you're both after the same property?" I said, "I'll go and buy another one." There's a hundred years of stock here. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's made it. yeah. I'll go around the corner you know it's um, it's just never going to happen but I, I encourage that the more people doing what I'm doing in all sorts of different business models the end result is to start to rebuild and refurbish properties that if no one did anything they'd just fall down and nobody would care yeah that's what I love yeah. about what you're doing it's wonderful it's absolutely wonderful that that is the social impact of what you're yeah, doing and, and, I, and i really like your ethic of collaboration as well and how lucky we are to have that inventory and possibility here because it's not you know it's not porto or, or lisbon where it would be much more competitive so uh, yeah. in answer to john's question a possible john could become a franchise owner up in pont de lima or join the paul reese uh, mentoring academy to start a similar business <laughs> at some other point uh, maybe john is, have you got any more no interest in opening a franchise. Uh, <laughs> interested in maybe being an investor, but uh, yeah. uh, not a not a franchisee. <laughs> right. Okay. But good question, though, and that does really. I think that really nails the whole thing about um, you know where you've chosen to be and the importance of uh, knowing. on the social social impact. Can I just. I know we've discussed this before, Carl, but I have a an update on that. I was in Pedro Galpacano yesterday and there'd been a, a, a council owned um jcb backhoe as you may call it uh knocking down a wall in a very narrow lane near a house that i've nearly finished casa adelina the old nurse's house um and i went down to have a look and out of the top window the other side of the lane a head came out and it's actually a local estate agent employee and i said what's going on and she said they've knocked the wall down at the old bakery because behind the wall is a lovely old building that stopped being a bakery probably in the 80s, I'd say. Um, so they're creating some space in front and it's being done up. And this estate agent, because she knows me, I've actually never done any business with her. She said, well, they're doing this house and the one up in the square and your one that we could see from where we were, where we were, said, and your one around the corner, uh, by the post office how's that going 
Um, and she said, and somebody's two Americans have bought the big house in the square. <laughs> and said, it's just great what's happening here. She Isn't said, everyone is so thrilled that finally this old ta this old town, it's getting some life back. She said, every day there's the sound of work workers working and radios blaring and people swearing in Brazilian. And then <laughs> she said, that's what every village needs. That's great. She said, yeah, yeah Paula in the local shop's happy. They all go and top up with beer at lunchtime. So it's, um, she said, I wouldn't say you started it, but certainly yours was the first high profile project. So it's right on the main square. And she said, it, honestly, she said, it's been such a shot in the arm for everybody here. That's wonderful. And this is, and, and the change is exponential, isn't it? The, the change will be exponential rather than linear once things start to happen. Yeah, and from a business point of view, the more of those old buildings that are done up and sold, the higher the prices go. Yeah. And I make I make more money. Yes. You know, at the end of the day, that's what I'm here for. I've got shareholders. And yeah, to see the old bakery, I tried to buy it once, but they wouldn't sell it to me. And but it's the families that are doing it up and will sell it on. Great, because that's a real eyesore near a property. I'm spending a lot of money on creating something beautiful. So the more that pop up here, there, and everywhere, great. I think it's Fantastic. great, and, and that was quite cheering, you know. And this was from a person who's not who's not renowned for giving praise or even good morning. So Excellent. It was, um, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Good stuff. Sorry, okay. I'm aside there. No, not at all. Um, the the website is uh, rural proper rural-properties.com um, to find you, and people can make your. <laughs> that way and certainly we can put anybody in touch who wants to be put in touch with you who might be seeing this recording um so we can conclude there unless there are any more questions any further questions from um the team here tonight i think i think we'll agree it's impressive what you're doing paul and thank thanks for being here tonight and long may it continue and um, it's, yeah, for, me, for me it's such a, a joy to see these areas i know i know where you mean you know i've been to the pedrogo pequino um market on a sunday i know that village and it's a beautiful place, and like a lot of places in, in Central, you think it's just a, you know maybe just a little bit of a push, a little bit yeah. of investment, and it's just going to change the game around here. And that's, it yes. sounds like what you're doing in that, and uh, a long long way that continue, and hopefully other people will copy you in the way that you don't mind, uh, as you yeah, said. Before. Absolutely. So yeah, absolutely. Let's let's leave that there. Rural-properties.com um, uh, to find Paul there.